So this is the part where I tell you what we're going to do today. I'm going to be channeling a dragon with my friend Mary McKenzie. Um, yeah, and now it's time to break for all the bad parts. Okay, we're on. Welcome to Blue Lightning Healing Meditations. My name is Susie Parker Goins. I'm a channel. I bring through divine and accessible aspects for you to talk to, have a conversation with. You can find me at www.bluelightninghealing.com or email me at susie, S-U-S-Y, at bluelightninghealing.com to set up an appointment, ask a question, connect. Today is another edition of the Channeling with Mary. It is my huge pleasure and honor to have Mary McKenzie here, the miniature witch to to have a conversation and it looks like it looks like dragon's gonna come through so mary hi welcome hi <laughs> hi Susie. <laughs> how are you <laughs> this is why i frequently need to have scripts <laughs> <laughs> well i'm happy to be here again i very much enjoyed our last conversation and i'm looking forward to talking to the dragons I do have a relationship with them. I am year of the dragon, but I have had them around me all my life. They are a huge part of what's going on with humanity right now. They're very big on helping us. So I don't often speak with them myself, but I am aware of them. I currently am working on build, rebuilding. I say rebuilding because of the pandemic kind of shifted things around, but I have a tarot card reading practice where I do a tarot card reading for you and also speak to your spirit guides and or entities or energies that are around you that want to talk to you as well. You get two for the price of one with my readings. So that would be, if that's something that would work out well for you, then that's great. I'm here today to talk to the dragons with Susie and see what they have to say. You're active on Instagram. And yes. your handle there is? Yes. Miniature Witch. And that's Miniature and then Witch, W-Y-T-C-H-E. Sites on there and you can find me, you can message me through there as well. So, And you have a groovy new logo. I am so excited about that. I do. Yeah. That's stunning. I'll make sure I include it mm -hmm. in the meditation. Knowing that you've got a relationship with Dragon is nice. I started working with Dragon's I don't know. It's been pretty recently. I see dragons and my Shungite dragon, he dropped. And so now he's looking a little bit more war torn <laughs> than I would like, but I kept that bit. What I found out recently is that the energy of the dragon is not necessarily in a dragon shape. I've got a Garnet's crystal skull. No, no. It was one of my mahogany obsidians that I had at an event and I started channeling that dragon. And I was in there, my, my, my ego was going, no, you don't look like a dragon. You can't be a dragon, but we are a dragon, but you can be. I am. And I thought really I was having some sort of stroke and everybody <laughs> got to see me because <laughs> I was fighting it. And yeah, the people who were there with me, they know me and they were laughing pretty much like you were too. <laughs> Just remember Yoda, Susie, this crude matter, it is not us. We are luminous beings. <laughs> yeah, they, I, I must say, do, being on this path has really challenged and, and changed, shifted a whole lot of my perspectives. And I think that's a great thing. You know, we're so much better for it. No, I want to hear more about your relationship with dragons. How do you know you work with them? How do you know they're there? Um... Well, let's see. They like to be around me physically. And the only way that they can do that is they like to find little figurines. I will be in a store or something and, and I'll see one and whichever dragon and whatever energy it represents is in that figurine. And so I've got, I've probably got 20 of them in my apartment all over the place and they want to be very specifically placed so that they do different things for me in different areas in my home like um, a grid yeah 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 oh wow a dragon grid that's that. totally yeah. boss you're everywhere i think god i think the only room that they're not in is the kitchen and that's because fire's in the kitchen because of the stove so i don't really <laughs> need a statue just saw that too it was like because there's fire in the kitchen okay awesome but i've just always been aware of, <laughs> of their presence so and um i became very aware of one specific dragon she's humongous she's a she's the size of a, a two-story house and she's white with very very deep blue eyes she's a mother dragon 
She's extremely, extremely protective. I haven't spoken with her much in the last few years, but she's always around me, always watching out for me. And I think that she's often the voice, quote unquote, that talks to me uh, when I need to hear things. She'll just pop in. She takes that moment when your consciousness is not totally drawn up in your ego and she'll say, hey, you know, and she'll start <laughs> speaking to me. So the, the story is that she uh, came into my life in a figural way through a, a painting that I have. And she was paired with a black dragon. They were two pieces of art that this artist did that I bought at a convention I was at. Black dragon actually went to my ex-husband. His, his dragon is black and also as big. I had no relationship with that dragon until one evening I was meditating on our bed and all of a sudden in my mind's eye I saw this huge dragon eye looking at me, just the eye, and then he started to back up and back up and back up and back up and I was aware of this humongous black dragon in front of me and he was just looking at me and checking me out because I hadn't been married to my ex for very long and he was like, uh, uh, uh. That's all he did. And I guess I was in. <laughs> so that was the last contact I had with him. But he kind of hung out with my, my lady for a while. And then, of course, when I split up, I took my painting. My ex took his. And there you go. But she is in my bedroom. And she hangs on the east wall. But I... Again, I don't talk with them, talk quote unquote with them a lot, but I'm aware of them. I'm reminded that they're around. They, they let me know that they're around when they need to. And a few years back, I was in a school where I was, I took a class about them actually. And the person that taught it was very well versed. I, I believe so anyway. It felt right to me on them. And so I was introduced to the wider world of what they're actually doing on an elemental basis for humanity and for the planet. And it was quite surprising, but really reassuring. <laughs> cool. Cause they feel very protective to me. I know there's, see my dragons, I've got a big black one. There's a young friend of mine. She's like seven and she had a baby one hanging with her and it would distract her from schoolwork. They were both very young. Big black one feels very protective. Mm -hmm. And other ones I have encountered, there's uh, another practitioner, Galactic Ashley, who, who works pretty extensively with the dragons. We did a Gaia's Dragons event mm -hmm. some time ago. They download for me. I've tried to channel them. So that's why I'm a little, eh, not hesitant, but a little suspicious that we may just get, don't be an idiot. <laughs> I'm done <laughs> kind of thing. They are not very loquacious. <laughs> you know, hearing you say that, yeah, I don't really talk to her much. It's like, yeah, she doesn't need you to talk to her. She's doing her job. They can be epic creatures. Uh, there was somebody I worked with a while back and, and she was working on the ethereal plane with dragons and, and doing all kinds of really badass stuff. And then popular culture, there's a lot of dragons there. What's your take on that? From what I know, as opposed to what the human world knows about them, I'm yeah. very careful because I think that dragons, like so many other of the elemental beings, have been placed into a narrative that works for humans to understand them. Oh. But it's quite true. Um, it's so not quite true? No, okay. some of it is, some of it is, especially okay. the long past, the history feels true. Like, I do believe that they actually physically existed here. I do believe that. But as most of those beings, fairies, unicorns, mermaids, etc., they kind of went underground when we started to become less enlightened. And I think that that was something that they chose to do that I think was smart because they could do a lot more behind the scenes right now for us than they can otherwise. But because things are shifting, the veils are lifting and we're waking up. As that happens, they're going to come more into our consciousness and we're going to become more aware of who they are and what they're here for because they're guardians of the planet. They work with those energies. Planet Earth has been here for billions of years, long before we showed up. 
And there were, was other stuff going on here long before we came along. It came and went, came and went. Like the dinosaurs, they came and went. And we're going to come and go. <laughs> Mama has to remain. She has a purpose here floating in the in space. And those energies are here to protect that investment <laughs> for whoever shows up next and needs this as this energy evolves and everything evolves you know it's like it's like that joke it's like okay well i'm dead now i'm gonna go be an amoeba on venus you know because i can i don't know i just had this image of earth being the bitcoin of the galaxy yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know yeah. it goes up it, it goes down you know, as opposed to some things that we've read earth wasn't created for us we came here to use it for a while, and we're, we're going to be moving on. Everybody so, else has shown up here and left. That's an interesting point. We're going to be gone at some point. Is that due to, this is dealing a little bit with this, let's look into the future. Is that because of extinction or because we've ascended? Or is that even a valid question to ask right now? No, they're saying, no, don't go there. I think okay. it's both. That's my opinion. I mean, I, they can hold their opinion. And I honor them to do that because they know. You know, I don't, but my personal opinion is, is I think it's both. I think we're ready to move on and ascend. I think we need to. And yeah. I think we're, we're yeah. also becoming extinct. We don't, we don't need to be here. The mother doesn't need us here. I think that's becoming really obvious. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't She's need doing us. doing her things. That's one of the fascinating things, the volcanoes. There are some that are continually erupting. Is that dragon energy then? I think it's connected to it. Yeah. Anything that has to do with the energy transformation of the planet will have a lot to do with all the elementals. They all have their part to play in that. Okay. And dragons aren't limited just to being fire. I mean, there are water dragons, there are earth dragons, oh, yeah. there are air yeah. dragons. Dungeons and Dragons got that right. <laughs> they did. Whoever wrote that series was pretty close to right on. Uh, you know, the dragon class I took later, I was like, this is really interestingly close to that game. Wasn't right on, of course, you know, but it was, it was pretty close. I was surprised. They cover all the elements. And so if we look at it from that pentagram point of view, there's earth, wind, fire, air, and spirit. Yes. There are spirit dragons. Oh, yes. Oh, that just occurred to me. Oh, I've had a few of those, oh, wow, kind of moments lately. <laughs> um, I can't think of anything else. Do you have any comments to add? No, there's more than the five that you've mentioned. And I think that as you get deeper into who they are and what they are and what they're here to do, you'll be introduced to those. Uh, yeah, I've got one saying space dragons is not the term, but it's the one that me as Susie <laughs> understands. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I know there's galactic dragons and the interdimensional dragons are particularly interesting to me. It's an aspect of the universe, of source. We don't have to all be in dragon shapes. They're not all flower shapes. They're all, not it's all part of it. And it's whatever is, like when I talk about when I channel, it's all whatever's most accessible to the individual. Yeah. yeah. So they're going to come through like they need to. Crystalline dragons are pretty cool. They're very studly. <laughs> okay. Well, I think we're going to go ahead and, and start channeling. So are y'all ready? Okay. So let's just go do this. So just everybody breathe. Do you need names or are you happy knowing we are here? I don't require any names and I am happy that you're here. Good. What is it you wish to know? Well, I think we're curious as to what's going on. A lot of us are confused frightened, frustrated. I think that we want to know what to do. I think there's many of us with good hearts and we need guidance and we seek your wisdom. So she is casting us forward from the time of recording. We understand. Yes. All right. Shifts are being made. There is a resistance to the shifting for those who feel the way it was before was comfortable, and yet it was only comfortable for them, not for all. There will not be complete and utter comfort for the human race. No complacency, for then you stop growing. However, the complacency of one portion of the population has run out of time, and the comfort of other portions of the population now is to be considered 
is now needs to be put in place. Comfort, meaning not necessarily home and food, but respect, treatment as equals as humans. And of course, it is those who have been, who have seen themselves as being better than others. Those are the ones who will be put at a different level. They feel that they have leveled down in some way, that they are lesser from what they have experienced. And it is not a question of quantity. It is now a question of equilibrium. To achieve equilibrium, the balance goes from one extreme to another. And equilibrium is the process in which that shift in extreme becomes less and less differentiated. And it is with that, that more empowerment of those who have been mistreated, the empowerment steps forward. It may feel like it is a blast from the dragon's belly. It is not. It is finally making it through the cacophony of privilege. It is finally cutting through to those places where it is being heard. You will still hear those death cries, that death rattle of the paradigms that are no longer useful. They're teaching you about inequality, about disequilibrium, and they do not like having that sort of a light being shone on them. They do not like being wrong. And yet most of your population would say, yes, you are wrong. Get used to it. There is the potential for using the same tactics that have been used previously, that have been proven to be abusive, overly volatile, and that is incumbent on this new paradigm shift to not use the same techniques, the same methods as have been used before, for those were methods previously that were used for oppression, repression. So finding one's voice, finding one's passion is part of the new paradigm. This has been an opportunity to strip away the veils. You mentioned earlier the veil is thinning. The veil has been torn off. The veil is now being seen. And again, those who liked the veil as it was will continue to frantically try to replace it. And when the masses, the overwhelming opposition to how it was before, join together, the veil will never go up again. Other questions? This one got distracted. Redirect, please. Do you have any advice or information for those who seek to help in this rebalancing process? To not allow opposition to divide. To use discernment. Look at the information. Don't just fling it out there as truth when you have not done any research on your own. It is time for everyone to accept responsibility for their actions. Many will not. Many do. And even in the taking of responsibility is a layer of, well, I'm doing it. Why aren't you? That still there is superiority there. And that is not useful. It is the sense of equality, that sense of re-examination, self-examination, which will bring forward this change. Understanding that many will not change, that many will stay in this old antiquated paradigm, allows those who are ready to shift to look Compassion is a word bandied about quite a bit. But if you understand where someone at the other end of the spectrum is at, you have compassion for them, and yet you have compassion for yourself when you discern if that action is acceptable to you or not. As you develop more compassion for yourself, you will also stand more in your power and be able to call out the paradigm that needs to be shifted Do you understand? I think so. Yeah. This one says we call it anti-racism, anti-misogyny, to stand up and call out. And those at the forefront of that have very strong dragon lineages. They are empowered. Dragon teaches not only strength, strength of will and empowerment, but also 
trust in oneself, self-knowledge, self-understanding, when you are at a place of being so extended that the fatigue sets in, and yet some people feel they must continue for no one else will do it. It is in the strength, the connection between dragon and humans. There is that deep spiritual connection which allows one to fall back when recharging and recovery and healing must happen. Dragons are not about unending stamina. Dragons move fluidly through energy, through time, through space, through all of it. Notice dragons of the variety of elements. You spoke earlier of the five and more. Dragons are an aspect of the universe to appeal to the human perception of strength. Dragons have also been portrayed as evil, greedy, as human characteristics, and we are not. We are part of source. We are part of you. We are in the heart. We are in the root chakras. We are everywhere. To accept a dragon to work with puts one on a path of self-determination, self-proclamation. Yes, you do heal the trauma of the past lives in this life in whichever capacity you need trauma healed from. And it is a sense of empowerment, but it is also a place of inner peace. And it is that balance humans can understand. And when they do understand, ascension becomes possible, reachable. What else? I think right now, especially in more developed areas of the world, humanity is experiencing extreme forms of grief and they're reaching out to their religions and in other ways to find meaning in what that is. I have been told that this is the theme for right now with the virus is to let go of our grief for what we are, we are grieving for the past and why we're hanging on. And I was wondering if you could speak further on that. Grief for what was, that is a valid experience. It is when one becomes completely mired in the grief or fights so strongly to maintain what was good in the past. Uh, examples. Some would say technology has shifted. Would you be willing to let go of whatever device you have, personal device? Many would say no. Others would gladly do it. Again, it is about balance. There are those who do live without what would be considered a modern convenience life. They balance those who live a completely technological life. To release the grief is not to forget. To release the grief is to integrate the loss. Mm -hmm. One may be <sighs> melancholic. One may miss how things were. Does that necessarily mean it was the best? Mm -hmm. Ascension includes retaining lessons, retaining wisdom, and integrating that into the new paradigm. What was it? This one brings comes forward with that. A year ago, people were clearing out the clutter in their home because they had time to. Mm -hmm. This is what you have been called on to do spiritually and emotionally. Trauma is not clutter. It is a part of individual's experience. Mm -hmm. To be able to process them to the point where one is able to see the traumas impact on the individual, but to not perpetuate that trauma, not to continue the cycle. That is an important task for those to do. It can be intimidating and overwhelming, which is then the point in which asking for help, however that manifests, comes into play. Joining with humans, dragons remind humans that you are not alone in the universe. Mm -hmm. Think the earth is the only planet to sustain life is narcissism as a race. And to think 
that life in the universe is limited to a bipedal oxygen breathing individual is more narcissism to look and see the spectrum of existence. If one believes source is omniscient, is all encompassing, and yet to limit it to a binary existence is to underestimate not only source, but yourself, the range of emotion, the range of experience. Your planet encompasses that, and yet there is more. Those who awaken to the dragon, who awaken to spirit guides in whatever shape or form, however they manifest, are opening up to the expansiveness of the universe. Those who do that first are considered imbalanced. <laughs> they are considered crazy. They are judged. But that is a basic tactic used by those who are refusing to grow. So trust us when we tell you you are not crazy when you talk to dragons or relatives who have passed over or fairies, whatever, talking to your pet even. You are opening the communication lines that are so desperately needed. That connection manifests in a variety of ways. And to shut down from one form of manifestation over another is to limit oneself, one's own experience. We are here to help humans expand their perceptions. Does that resonate? I think so. You you spoke of there is more and that kind of pinged me to ask, how would you elaborate on that, that there is more? Because if we're to move past this particular type of existence that we've created now, knowing that there is more, what would be in store for us to explore, to uh, see, to, to expand into, I guess? Is... Some would call it ascension, self-realization. Kundalini awakening. There are many terms used for it. To be able to expand one's consciousness outside of the physical form is what is in store. The traveling one can do within one's own mind will show you the opportunities in front of you to join in, to understand your oneness source. is. It's an experience some receive with open arms and joy and others fear. And yet those responses are part of the spectrum of experience to go beyond an expectation of what one receives or what one experiences is part of that opening to the oneness, to see the possibilities, to be able to pull a point from the universe and have that past life, that future life. This one just asked herself, if time is all one and exploring past lives is to identify a point in this and expand it out, we are expanding our perceptions of time as, how did she put it? We focus, we are focused in this moment of time. To go along and pull a memory would be to pull another point of time, even from the future, which are dreams. So memories and dreams are all part of your timeline. It is all still one with the universe. She was able to sleep better after getting that out of her head. <laughs> but time is all one. All opportunities, all outcomes are included in source. Say you walk one way through this door or go the other way through that door. For, for all the myriad possibilities in front of you now, you don't reduce that number of possibilities going out the left side. You just produce more, another myriad of possibilities. Mm -hmm. So when one is asked to focus on a particular outcome, releasing expectations, but seeing those outcomes and finding that one that you most desire and then focus on that and follow the map that is presented to you. Is that the path you wish to have taken in that question? <laughs> uh, it's the path I'm hoping to, that I'm taking now. I started my journey in realizing how desperately important self-care was. I learned that 
from my mother who chose not to do that. Um, I, I learned it from a few separation issues that I had after I mo moved away and started to live alone. Um, I had some things drop out of my life that, and are continuing to drop out of my life to help me understand that I need to prioritize myself and not in a selfish way, of course, but in a self-awareness way. And so I guess my final question would be for you to possibly expand on the uh, statement of letting it go, because that's been huge for me, understanding deeply and personally what letting it go means. Letting it go. <sighs> to release, to let go, to dispose of, to determine that something someone, emotion, whichever, whatever you choose, you are understanding it no longer serves your highest good. There are measures individuals take that bring them comfort. What is comfort? Comfort makes you feel like you always feel. Does it mean you feel good? Some people take comfort in and say, oh, human examples. In alcohol, they take comfort in that. That is used to numb one. And when those effects have worn off, they are inundated with the emotions even more because they have been set aside. They have had a dam set up in front of them. To let go is to look at an object, a situation, an emotion dispassionately. You see it for what it is. Mm -hmm. You detach from it. All right, so that person caused you harm. You look at them and see, all right, that happened. To continue to have an onslaught of emotion around it, that they call them triggers now. When you are able to rewire the trigger, if we want to keep with a mechanical metaphor, it does not mean that experience has been erased. It means you have processed it in such a way that it has a proper place, a proper perspective in your life. And if you are not able to do it, if you are not willing to do that, it does not reflect negatively on you. Part of letting it go is releasing the judgment surrounding the circumstance. As soon as you let go primarily of the judgment you place on yourself, that is letting it go. You are able to look at a circumstance and say, yes, that happened. I am angry about it. I was angry about it. And not step into a place of why, why is this? I'm such a bad person because I don't let go of it. Or I am weak. Or when you let go of that self-judgment, that is the true letting go. Does not mean it did not happen. It means that you are no longer energetically connected to it mm -hmm. and can move more freely about energetically. Many tools are available to do that. And true, it may be your sole purpose to either let go of the situation, to detach from it, or to remain embroiled in it. No judgment either way. No one is weaker or stronger because they are able to integrate or not. It takes an infinite amount of space to manifest to be in physical body. Trusting that aspect, trusting that perspective is important to understand. Being in body is important for your soul development. The circumstances around it do not make you weaker or stronger. It makes you, you. And what you learn in this life, in this physical existence, you bring back to source after this physical body has been shed and your experience integrates with the whole of the oneness. I was often told that we are the eyes and ears of God and our experience is God's experience. And that fascinated me once I put that perspective into play because it made me realize that judging others was, it wasn't fulfilling my purpose of being the eyes and ears of God, because judging somebody else's journey is not productive because it doesn't, it doesn't acknowledge 
what you're doing. This teacher also said something else that I remember at the time felt very callous, but I've realized is so true. It, it's, it simply is none of your business what they're doing. They are being the eyes and ears of God for their journey. You are being the eyes and ears of God for your journey. And each experience is giving more information to God to feed the creation as it continues in its fluidity. And that to me was extremely profound. I think that understanding that is for more people would be very helpful. Releasing process. Yes. Judgment is being the eyes and ears of man. Yes. And that does not serve. Detachment from an outcome is important. Uh, Recent events. One would say, what if someone does something wrong? What if someone kills a man unnecessarily? That is an experience. And yet the whole process is an experience for the eyes and ears of God. Will this justice be served? Will it not? Will it open eyes for the greater issue? Will it give hope? Being the eyes and ears of God is not an indomitable task. It is one we all sign up for. It is one you sign up for when you choose to come in body. We are servants and guides and mentors as dragons. We give you the energy, uh, hope if you wish That seems very much like blowing dandelion puffs, but yes, we can be fluffy. We prefer not to be, but whatever aspect of us makes us accessible Mm -hmm. to anyone who wishes to work with us, we are open to it. We do not test humans. It is not as if one has to run the gauntlet of dragon (laughs) games. You show your mettle by taking on, by accepting us as guides. We will morph into a different shape if you wish. That's why there are so many possibilities to connect with a spirit guide in a variety of ways. Do you have final remarks? Only that I'm very honored to have had this discussion because it confirms so much for me as someone who is deeply embroiled in the great work and furthering that adventure and moving into a new area of study and seeing how that's going to pan out because it's it's giving me a whole new set of humans to work with so that should be interesting (laughs) you will find more dragon people among them i yeah i'm pretty sure that's the case but i thank you for for doing this for everyone listening and, and for me, I haven't spoken to you in a while. And, and I do want to say this, I apologize for that. But I think it's, I think it's because I've been such a part of your energy for so long that I, I kind of take it for granted. <laughs> I know that you're there. So we are not like the mother sitting there saying you don't call us. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You have been in our energy, and this episode belies the fact that human language is not our preferred means of communication. This one has facilitated the language use, but yet we do work with downloads. That is our preferred method of communication. Your mother dragon has been there. You recognize what she does for you. She holds space for you as you hold space for others. Dragons work with downloads. We do not need apologies. We do not need obeisance. This one spent way too much time bowing and scraping. (laughs) Being in the energy is what is most important, accepting it. Discern. Do not go blindly into it. We are not taskmasters who are asking for blood. We work with you when you are ready, but we will work with you. So we thank you for giving us voice. Thank you. Uh, We are done. Okay. Okay. (laughs) 
he leaves this big thing in my heart space. It's like, it's not quite a head, but it's not spiky, but it's just like this big ball of energy there. It doesn't feel uncomfortable. It's very present. It was, yeah, he left and, and I see my hand on my, on my mouse going, what am I doing? He's like, I don't know. What are you doing now? What, <laughs> it's your game. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much, Mary. Oh, you're welcome. I, I enjoyed that. I really enjoyed that. I feel like, well, I know, you know, sitting here, I get this, you are going to get so many downloads. And if I may ask Dragon Energy to provide any downloads for anyone listening, if they choose to accept it. Yeah. And that, what are those downloads about? It's a shifting energy to open hearts to open minds to the possibilities they are so, oh wow they are so much about the possibilities and and understanding that we have these energetic i want to call them escorts but these energetic guides <laughs> with us and the dragons are happy to take part if anyone is open to receiving that energy mm -hmm. so thank you dragon okay oh i guess i guess we need to do an outro okay i gotta get back in body <laughs> So again, thank you, Mary McKenzie, for, for mediating this, mediating, for moderating this. I appreciate it. You had really, I, I guess we had good questions because they're, he's, they're very happy over there. They're just, okay, we did good. We got our message out. So thank you for tuning in. Um, and this has been Susie Parker Goins of Blue Lightning Healing, www.bluelightninghealing.com. Contact me at Susie, S-U-S-Y, at bluelightninghealing.com to schedule an appointment, ask a question, connect. I'm on a variety of platforms with Blue Lightning Healing Meditations. So thank you so much. And Mary, back at you. And thank you also. And I'm Mary McKenzie at Miniature Witch, Miniature Witch Tarot. I can be found on Instagram at Miniature Witch, W-Y-T-C-H-E. And you can connect to my website there and also uh, send me a message if you're interested in a reading. Cool. Thanks. And until next time, blessings. <laughs>